Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's video is going to take us to around the 18th of August and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles which run to a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days as well. But we're going to begin by focusing on the wet and windy weather that we've got coming up in uh, the next uh, couple of days. So that's where we'll start off for today's video. So uh, this is the trouble that's brewing for tonight, tomorrow and into Saturday. This is from the weatheroutlook.com. It's the EU Mexat uh, image and you can see that we have got this uh, huge swirl of cloud out in the Atlantic. That's the centre of the low pressure just there, sitting to the southwest of Ireland, and we've got this large sort of hook of cloud ahead of it, indicated by those uh, white colour areas. That is the thick cloud and heavy rain that's going to be on the way through tonight and into tomorrow, spreading northeastwards across uh, the UK and much of uh, Ireland as well. So it is going to be turning wet and windy in the next few hours. This is the facts chart. This is the human interpretation of the models by the forecasters at the UK Met. Facts chart for midnight. You can see that we've got, uh, well, there's a centre of the low pressure still down to our southwest. We can see all of these weather fronts piling northwards and northeastwards, bringing bands of heavy rain. Uh, north is across much of Ireland, England and Wales tonight. Probably not going to Scotland until tomorrow morning. There are lots of weather fronts. So there's various warm fronts, so cold fronts, occluded fronts. You name it, it's going on. And there's going to be bouts of heavy rain spreading northwards and eastwards tonight. Winds will be picking up as well into tomorrow. That's how things are looking at midday. So the centre of below then gets a little bit closer to us sitting just to the south of the, of the Republic of Ireland. We've got these weather fronts pushing northwards and eastwards then and follow, following along behind. They'll be taking the persistent rain with them up to Scotland and north and uh, northeastern parts of England. Following along behind will have these convergence lines and little fronts and troughs. They will just enhance the shower risk and bring uh, further heavy showers through the course of tomorrow afternoon. Becoming ever wind as well, windy through the afternoon. That takes us to midnight on Saturday. So by then we're losing all of the weather fronts. We've just got one front that kind of like hooks round this area of low pressure from northern Scotland into western parts of uh, Wales and southwestern England. You'll notice how tight packed the isobars are getting through the course of sat uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. So that's when the strongest winds will start to affect us through the course of uh, uh, Saturday morning. This is midday Saturday. Very tightly packed ice bars across England aware. So that's where the strongest of winds will be on the southern side of the low pressure. I think it could be seeing gusts of wind widely, sort of 20, 30, 40 miles an hour across England and Wales. Some parts of uh, West Wales, South West England could well see gusts of wind, perhaps 50 to 60 miles an hour during the course of Saturday morning. That is gale force, and uh, it could be enough to cause a few problems around those southern western coastal areas those strong winds will continue into the early hours of sunday so it's going to take a while for these winds to die down through the course of saturday actually uh the wettest weather on saturday will be in the north with these weather fronts not as many showers across england and wales and as we get through into uh sunday the winds will finally start to calm down then um, but still with lots of weather fronts in the north and west, so still the risk of further showers, if not longer spells of rain across northern parts of the country in particular. I think overall, though, Sunday will be kind of like an improving day. You will notice there are more areas of low pressure weather fronts out in the Atlantic here. So although early next week may turn a little bit drier on Monday, from Tuesday onwards, we could be bringing in more areas of low pressure. I mean, maybe pretty deep areas of low pressure as well. This is looking like quite a prolonged spell of unsettled weather that we're entering into now as we're going further into August. This how Euro 4 is forecasting the rainfall. This is from uh, Weather Online. 
So uh, this is for 6 o'clock in the evening. Already the first sort of fingers of rain getting into the far south of Ireland, into far southwest of England and western parts of Wales. And through the course of the night, this rain marches northwards and eastwards, bringing a real soaking by 3 o'clock in the morning to much of northern Ireland, northern England. Uh, it pushes back southwards into parts of the Midlands, Wales, central, southern, southeastern parts of England too. Uh, so a lot of wet weather tomorrow morning. This is uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. By then the rain is getting up to Scotland. So the rain will be very heavy and it uh, continues to push down into parts of central and eastern and southeastern England uh, by that point. Uh, the rain will carry on moving northwards and northeastwards through the course of tomorrow afternoon. But it could get a bit stuck across northern and eastern parts of Scotland. It could be raining all day for those areas. Elsewhere it dries up for a time across central east of Britain. But showers are packing into the west of these ever freshening and strengthening southeasterly or southwesterly winds. And these showers push eastwards through the course of tomorrow uh, afternoon and tomorrow evening. That gets us to midnight on Saturday. Lots of showers, if not longer spells of rain in across these western parts of the country. And that's when the winds will be at their strongest across southern parts of England. Really tight back tight bars there with risk of gales across some southwestern parts of the country. So it is going to be pretty rough. It's more like the sort of weather you would expect in October than in uh, August. So it will feel rather autumnal, I think, over the weekend. And that's the other thing. Temperatures with this area of low pressure initially are going to be quite warm, actually. So tomorrow could see temperatures up to around 25 degrees in the southeast corner once you get rid of that persistent rain. Uh, but over weekend, the temperatures will be cooling down quite a bit. So uh, it's going to be feeling ever cooler, wet, windy. It's not going to be a very nice weekend. This unsettled weather looks like it's going to last into next week. These are the 500 millibar height and omni flow charts from the Penn State University for the next uh, 7 to 10 days. We've got the ECM WF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars, 80 miles feet is an area in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Uh, blue extrapolates to low pressure, yellow, orange and red will extrapolate to high pressure. So we can see that in the 7 to 10 day time frame, this takes us into the second half of August, it's still looking unsettled with the ECM, below average heights to the north and to the east of the country. There is a ridge of above average heights out to the southwest, but it's kind of like to the west of uh, France, Spain and Portugal. So it leaves us in this west to northwesterly flow and it looks pretty unsettled and it looks rather cool as well. We will be bringing in the wind from the North Atlantic, of course, we'll bring in the air from the North Atlantic. So generally quite cool and quite unsettled as we're going into the week to 10 day time frame. GFS is very similar, but it's more unsettled. Look at this, deep areas of below average heights right way through the country and going to our east as well. That uh, the ridge of above average heights is further south. It's off the coast of Portugal. And uh, the black lines indicating the jet stream coming across the Atlantic just show that it's a very, very unsettled spell of weather. We have got northern blocking too. There's high pressure up over Greenland that's forcing the jet stream southwards. And so that's just very, very unsettled and cool conditions really continuing into... Um, you know, into the second half of August. So it does look very unsettled indeed. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's cover a at Rochdale today, another uh, suggested uh, location for this part of the video. So red right line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Rochdale starting close to average today. Temperatures do tick up tomorrow, but of course it's associated with that big area of low pressure. And then once that uh, sort of moves eastwards, that's going to introduce cooler air from the Atlantic. And so temperatures slide away through the weekend and into next week. So by the early part of next week, looking really quite cool indeed. Another little tick up there in the temperature. Again, probably associated with quite a deep area of low pressure. But overall, it looks as though the next week to 10 days, or the next couple of weeks, 10 days to a couple of weeks, uh, overall, it looks like going to be pretty cool with temperatures generally trending cooler than average overall. And again, just look at all these precipitation spikes that we've got. I mean, I think this new view of the uh, 
GFS ensembles from West Central does sort of over-dramatise the precipitation spikes a little bit. Uh, but nevertheless, this is a signal for it to be very, very unsettled in the next couple of weeks. So um, we've got that precipitation spike there. That's uh, tonight and tomorrow's wet weather. And then after then, just loads and loads of rainfall coming up. It is going to be a very, very unsettled couple uh, of weeks. We have certainly, I think, I think in a couple of weeks, we'll be able to say that we have certainly broken that prolonged dry spell that started last year um, around May, June time I think we'll be able to say definitively by sort of um, late August but we have definitely broken that dry spell of course we did really break it back in June but then it went pretty dry again uh, particularly for southern parts of the country late June and through much of July but this is looking like a, a very very definitive breakdown to that prolonged dry spell Temperatures on the slide too, so this is depicting surface temperatures at Rochdale. So at the moment, quite warm, uh, sort of low 20 Celsius. These undercut the temperature by a couple of degrees. So it's actually a little bit higher than that Rochdale today and tomorrow. But you can see the overall trend is downwards uh, quite clearly through the weekend and into next week. By early next week, the GFS ensembles are really keeping the temperature at Rochdale around. Uh, or under 15 degrees. Now, that's under day. It won't be quite that cool. I think we'll probably get temperatures at Rochdale next week to around 18 or maybe 19. But even so, it's a clear, clear downwards trend that we're seeing there from the uh, GFS ensembles. They are trending downwards with both the upper air and surface temperatures. So things are going to be feeling ever autumnal, I think, over the next week or so. Uh, confirmed by the temperature anomaly from the 8th to the 16th of August. Below average temperatures coming up for the UK and for Ireland. Precipitation anomalies from the 8th to the 16th of August. Uh, wetter than average, especially so for parts of Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland and Northern very very wet there on the scale we're kind of like going to 300 to 400 percent of average so um that would be quite that much would it but anyway it's going significantly above average across northern parts of the country uh down to the south uh generally closer to average but i think all areas uh really are going significantly wetter than average in uh, in uh, the next week from the 8th to the 16th of uh, August. With cooler average temperatures, it is going to feel quite miserable. <coughs> Excuse me. So we just need to uh, roll ourselves back here. This is from the uh, GFS operational run. So that's how things are looking on Sunday. Very unsettled. Winds are in from the uh, northwest. So we get rid of the worst of winds from Saturday in Sunday. They will moderate, but still pretty breezy and still bring showers into northern parts of the country. Early next week, it looks like we're going to a showery scenario. And then for um, Tuesday and Wednesday, this next area of low pressure heads in from the Atlantic. That will bring another bout of very heavy rain with it, probably through the middle of next week. Potentially very windy of that as well. We've got to watch out where the exact track of that low is. Is, but potentially another bout of wet and windy weather through the early part of next week. Uh, then we go through into the second half of next week, trying to raise heights a little bit in the south, but uh, this next low is uh, to west of Ivan, and that just rolls in as we go into the uh, weekend of 17th and 18th of August, looking very unsettled, really quite wet and windy there as we get to day 10, which is Sunday the 18th of August. Beyond that, into more extended range, winds turn into the north, so another shot of cool air coming down from the north. Then the next low heads in. Look at that. Wet and windy again on Thursday the 22nd of August. Taking us to, uh, as far as we can go, to 384 hours out, which is Saturday 24th. And it's still looking very unsettled and quite cool as well. So next couple of weeks of GFS is really, really unsettled. Lots of rain, lots of wind and temperatures becoming very, very cool also. Uh, GM looks like that again. It looks uh, rather wet and windy over the weekend, of course, into next week. Showery and pretty cool. Uh, then this area of low pressure heads in through the middle part of next week. It's a bit further northwest with this area of low pressure on the GM. So it's perhaps not bringing quite as much wet weather down into the south through the middle part of next week. It could be a little bit warmer down in the south as well. However, overall, it's still 
kind of similar to what the GFS is showing, which is uh, unsaid weather continues through next week. Heading up to day 10, again, always a little bit more high pressure to our south with the GM, so slightly drier and warmer at times across southern parts of the country up to day 10, but most places still looking cool and unsettled with the GM. ECMWF looks like that, so again, wet and windy uh, into the weekend, particularly windy crossing for Wales on Saturday. Then we go in towards lighter winds for Sunday, but also uh, turning showery, and particularly so up in the north, those showers could be heavy early next week. So Monday, showery day, then Tuesday to Wednesday is next low, heads in from off the Atlantic. That could bring another bout of wet and windy weather to many parts of the country through the uh, middle part of next week. Into the second half of next week with the ECM. So the high pressure down to the southwest, we saw that on the height anomaly flow charts. It could bring somewhat drier weather to southern southwestern parts of the country at times. But really, this is still an unsettled weather pattern. Low pressure is still in control of this. And particularly for northern parts of the country, very, very unsettled conditions. So they're slightly different, these models, um, as you get sort of days 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Slightly different in the exact placements of the high pressure and low pressures but overall they are still looking very unsettled really up to uh, day 10. These are the options we've got on the table within the ECM ensembles today from the Icelandic Met Office day 10 240 hours out of course is the 18th of August so the uh, coming uh, 10 day period looks like this. Uh, we've got uh, 14 members of the ECM ensembles with below average heights over to the east of the country. Very unsettled and cool as well. Jet stream is being pushed southwards. Another 14 look like that. Below average heights to the north and northeast of the country. A little bit of ridging down to our southwest. Um, Overall, quite showery and pretty cool, really, with those 14. But the far southwest could be a bit drier. 13 with uh, low pressure to the north of Scotland. That's bringing in a strong westerly flow there, very unsettled. And then 10, again, with below average heights over into the east of the country. A little bit of ridging down to the southwest, but overall, they're still pretty cool and pretty unsettled, too. That does include the ECM operational run, which is, of course, the run we was just looking at. Two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 23rd of August. 13 members of the East Emerald Sun are still really unsettled in two weeks' time with low pressure through the country and the jet stream like that. 12 with low pressure out to our west and also to our east. Um... So probably unsettled with that. Uh, I think this next area of low pressure is rolling in. There's no particular area of high pressure with that. Uh, nine with low pressure again to west southwest of us. Bringing in a strong jet stream like that. So they're really unsettling two weeks time too. Eight with low pressure out to the north and west. Some above average heights to our south and southeast. Probably still unsettled with this uh, scenario really. But could be warmer. Could be bringing up some warmer air from the south. Uh, five with above average heights down to our southwest, below average heights to our east. They still look quite changeable. And then four, a very minority option, but there is four there that have high pressure above average heights through the UK and Western Europe with jet streams getting moved northwards. So obviously that is a much drier and warmer option, but there's only four doing that. Um... So we shall see. There might be one or two hints there within the ECM ensembles that by kind of like the end of the third week of August, things might be starting to turn a bit drier and warmer. But it's very, very undefined. It's not definitive at all. And the overall um, trend of the ECM ensembles is probably still cool and unsettled even uh, to two weeks out. Finally, the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are 500 mm of our heights broken down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period will take us from the 11th to the 20th of August and looking unsettled in the coming 10 days below average heights uh, through the Atlantic and the UK extending into much of central and northern Europe too. So it just looks very unsettled, cool, wet and windy uh, there. Then we go through to the next 10-day period, which is taken to the end of August. It's the 21st to the 30th of August. 
Still looks unsettled. Below average height centered into the Atlantic, moving into Western Europe. Heights are rising a little bit up to our northeast, but not close enough to do much for us. That still looks pretty cool and pretty unsettled there to the end of the month. Uh, now, the next 10-day period gets into September. So this is taking us from the 31st of August to the 9th of September. It's days 21 to 30, I think. Um... So try to raise the heights a little bit to the south. Of course, early September tends to be a time that we associate with high pressure. It is trying to raise heights a bit to the south. However, low pressure is still out to west northwest of us. So it's trying to it's trying to turn things more unsettled, uh, more settled. But actually, that could still be quite an unsettled sort of scenario, particularly for northern parts of the country. I would have thought there is. Uh, unsettled weather still on still on offer there. Down in the south, probably a little bit drier and warmer. And then we go through today's 31 to 40, which is the 10th to the 19th of September. Again, it's the same idea. It's trying, it's having a go at raising heights to the south and southwest of us. So it's trying to ridge in the Azores high. But really, it looks rather weak. It looks rather flimsy. And my guess is that in reality, we're probably still quite unsettled here. Maybe not as much as we have been through August, but we're probably still quite unsettled. Uh, even going into September. So September is often a month that we associate with high pressure and drier, warmer conditions, but not always. September can sometimes be a very unsettled month. That doesn't look very unsettled, but it is struggling to get that Azores high hooked in. So um, it could be, this is going to be a rather more changeable September, perhaps, certainly the early part of it. We shall see. It's all a long way off. It's all very speculative. We have had a couple of quite unsettled Septembers, actually, over the past couple of years. Um, the last really hot September, uh, really warm September, was 2016. Uh, last year and the year before that, so 2017, 2018, September was rather cooler and more unsettled. Maybe it's going to be uh, a third cooler and more unsettled September coming up. We shall see. That's all very speculative. But coming back to a more reliable time frame, which is the next week to 10 days, it is looking unsettled. Um, so we've got this stormy weather coming up over the next couple of days. And then early next week, Monday may be a rather, uh, a rather calmer day. Sunday to Monday might go a bit calmer. But really, it looks as though next week is going to be unsettled with more spell of rain and uh, pretty strong winds coming up too. So it's not a great outlook, particularly if you've got any holidays planned uh, for the next week or two. You are going to have to um, prepare for rain and uh, that's it. So uh, unfortunately, the dry and warm start to August that we have had is not going to last very much long. In fact, it's on its way out today. Right, we'll be back tomorrow with your month head look at. That's JMA Friday, of course, and we'll have a week to 10 day video update tomorrow too. But uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.